In the opening scenes, the film provides glimpses of Joe Coy's comedic talents and charismatic stage presence as he performs at diverse venues, captivating audiences with his infectious energy and humor. His catchphrase, let's get the party started, baby, becomes a signature that fans eagerly anticipate during his shows. Amidst his rising success, Joe receives an opportunity to audition for a coveted role in a TV show pilot. The casting agent, impressed by his comedic prowess, is keen on casting him, but there's a catch. They want Joe to portray the character with a Filipino accent, a demand that puts him in a dilemma. On one hand, he recognizes the significance of representation and cultural authenticity, but on the other, he wrestles with the idea of compromising his own identity and speaking in a way that doesn't reflect his true self. As the story unfolds it becomes evident that he doesn't have the best relationship with his son, Junior. Their relationship has suffered due to Joe's demanding career as a comedian, leaving little time for meaningful interactions with his child. The void between them is palpable, and Junior often feels neglected and yearns for his father's attention. The strain on their relationship is further compounded by Joe's divorce from his wife. The dissolution of their marriage was emotionally challenging for both Joe and his ex-wife, adding to the complexities of their family dynamic. Despite their best efforts, the divorce has left a lasting impact on Junior, who struggles with feelings of abandonment and confusion. Adding to the complexity of the situation, Joe's ex-wife has moved on and remarried a famous hockey player. The stark contrast between Joe's modest career as a comedian and his ex-wife's new spouse's fame and success exacerbates the insecurities and self-doubt that Joe experiences. Despite Joe's busy schedule and career commitments, his mother's persistent invitations to visit home for Easter Sunday tug at his heartstrings. Feeling a sense of responsibility towards his Filipino heritage and family, he decides to make the trip to Daly City with his son, where his mother resides. Upon his arrival, he is warmly welcomed by his family, but tensions quickly surface as he discovers that his mother and aunt are embroiled in a long-standing disagreement. The family gathering becomes fraught with awkwardness and unresolved issues, leaving Joe in the uncomfortable position of being caught in the middle of the feud. As Joe finds himself in the midst of the delicate family dynamics, he unexpectedly assumes the role of mediator, endeavoring to mend the long-standing rift between his mother and aunt. The weight of his mother's desire for a peaceful Easter Sunday rests on his shoulders, as he becomes the key to bridging the gap between the two estranged family members. The revelation of Eugene's ill-advised actions lands like a thunderbolt on Joe, who had wholeheartedly trusted his cousin to make wise investments with the money. The shock of discovering that the funds were squandered on frivolous luxury items adds a layer of tension and urgency to the already emotionally charged family gathering. Initially, Joe had generously lent Eugene money to start a taco shop business out of a truck. However, Eugene's actions take an unexpected turn when he diverts the funds and transforms the truck into a hype truck, selling high-end merchandise resembling luxury brands like Louis Vuitton. This decision leaves Joe feeling uneasy and awkward, as it contrasts sharply with his expectations for the business. Adding to the already tense situation, Eugene gets involved with a dubious dealer, leading to a dangerous spiral of debts and threats. The dealer, who goes by the name of Dev Deluxe, becomes the menacing presence in their lives, relentlessly pursuing Eugene for the $40,000 owed. As the pressure to retrieve the money mounts, it creates a strain on the family gathering, diverting attention away from the harmonious Easter Sunday Joe's mother had hoped for. Eugene excitedly reveals to Joy the stolen Manny Pacquiao boxing gloves from the De La Hoya fight, he also reveals that he stole these gloves from Dev Deluxe. Filled with a mix of guilt and desperation, he proposes the daring idea of selling these gloves to repay the money they owe Dev. The plan is to use the gloves' value to cover the debt, hoping to escape the dangerous situation they find themselves in. Amidst the chaos, Joe's son finds himself entangled in his own teenage romance with a Filipino girl he meets at the mall, adding a touch of young love to the already frenetic storyline. To their surprise, they discover that Eugene had stolen Manny Pacquiao's iconic boxing gloves from Dev Deluxe, leading to a unique and unexpected twist in their desperate quest. In the meantime, Joy encounters Marvin with the intention of offering him the renowned gloves once owned by Dev Deluxe. However, Marvin declines the proposition, revealing that these pilfered gloves hold a value of nearly a million dollars. He points out the risk of attempting to sell stolen merchandise, making it unlikely for anyone to purchase them. Undeterred, Joy endeavors to persuade Marvin to reconsider and suggests his usual approach of reselling them. Marvin, on the other hand, proposes an alternative solution, a potential Filipino buyer who might be interested in acquiring the gloves. 
To sweeten the deal, he requests that Joy create a captivating commercial for him. As Eugene and Joy are leaving Marvin's place, they unexpectedly encounter Tala. During their conversation, Tala reveals that Dev is her boss, which immediately alarms Joy. Fearing the consequences of being associated with Dev, Joy attempts to make a quick getaway, but his actions do not go unnoticed. Dev spots him and immediately starts chasing Joy, Eugene, Junior, and Tala, turning the situation into a frantic and adrenaline-pumping chase. With Dev relentlessly pursuing them, the tension rises, and their hearts race as they try to evade their pursuer. The chase takes them through the bustling roads, adding to the intensity of the moment. Fortunately, just when it seems like there's no way out, the wailing siren of a police car cuts through the air, signaling a sudden twist in the chase. As a savvy criminal, Dev knows the risks involved in confronting the police, and he decides to stop chasing them, albeit reluctantly. The police officer in the car turns out to be none other than Joy's ex-wife, Vanessa. The encounter between Joy and Vanessa is tense as they exchange a few heated arguments. Vanessa, ever the responsible officer, demands an explanation for their reckless behavior. In a moment of desperation and quick thinking, Tala decides to play her part and pretends to be pregnant. Her act tugs at Vanessa's heartstrings, and she momentarily softens, showing a hint of sympathy. Taking advantage of the situation, Tala's act provides a timely distraction, enabling Joy and the others to escape the immediate danger. Vanessa, though stern in her demeanor, ultimately decides to let them off with a warning, considering Tala's apparent condition. As the police car pulls away, the tension eases, and the group finds themselves relieved and grateful for their lucky escape. Tala's quick thinking and Vanessa's intervention have bought them some time to regroup and rethink their strategy to handle Dev and the challenges they face. As the plot unfolds, the introduction of a famous actor, portrayed as himself in the Manny Pacquiao biopic, adds a surreal twist to the already chaotic situation. Oblivious to the glove's stolen origin, he unknowingly becomes entangled in their desperate quest to raise the money. As the film approaches its thrilling climax, tensions escalate when Dev Deluxe and his menacing henchmen storm Joe's family home, turning the scene into a whirlwind of comedic mayhem. The high-stakes situation places Joe's future as a comedian on the line, as he must make a critical decision that could impact both his career and his family's safety. The juxtaposition of his career aspirations with the danger unfolding at home creates a gripping and unpredictable narrative, leaving audiences on the edge of their seats until the very end. With the threat of Dev Deluxe and his menacing thugs hanging over them, the family is plunged into a high-stakes and dangerous situation. The tension escalates as Dev demands the hefty sum of $40,000 owed, creating an atmosphere of fear and uncertainty. However, the film skillfully weaves in a comedic twist when Joe, in a moment of unexpected heroism, decides to use Manny Pacquiao's stolen boxing gloves to face off against Dev. The absurdity of the situation leads to a chaotic and uproarious confrontation, leaving audiences both amused and exhilarated. Joe's unconventional weapon choice turns the tables in this high-stakes encounter, resulting in a hilarious and unexpected turn of events that keeps viewers laughing and on the edge of their seats. Amidst the chaotic aftermath of the confrontation, police officer Vanessa unexpectedly bursts onto the scene like a force of nature. With her commanding presence, no-nonsense attitude, and quick wit, Vanessa adds a refreshing and humorous twist to the unfolding plot. She takes charge of the situation with unwavering determination, fully committed to bringing Dev Deluxe and his menacing gang to justice. As the pandemonium unfolds, Joe finds himself in a state of turmoil. With his plans to return to LA for a crucial second audition in ruins, he must now navigate the unexpected turn of events. The film cleverly plays with the element of surprise as the casting agent inadvertently overhears the commotion through a FaceTime call with Joe. The mix of chaos and comedy in this situation heightens the tension, leaving both Joe and the audience on the edge of their seats. In the intense and chaotic aftermath of the encounter with Dev Deluxe and his menacing thugs, Joe's adrenaline-fueled stress finally takes its toll, causing him to collapse and lose consciousness. He wakes up in a hospital bed, disoriented and anxious about the recent events. As he gathers his thoughts, his phone rings, and to his surprise, it's the casting person from the TV show Pilot Audition. Expecting the worst news, Joe is taken aback when the casting person delivers an unexpected twist. They won't be offering him the initial role, but instead, they have a grander opportunity in store. The casting person excitedly informs Joe that they want to create a show specifically for him, capitalizing on his unique comedic talents and personal experiences. 
The new show, aptly titled, The Joe Valencia Show, will revolve around Joe and his vibrant Filipino-American family. It's an invitation to share their rich cultural heritage, their hilarious misadventures, and the touching moments that have shaped their lives together. Filled with a mix of relief, excitement, and gratitude, Joe accepts the offer wholeheartedly. The film concludes with a heartwarming final scene, transporting the audience to the set of The Joe Valencia Show. Joe stands at the center, surrounded by his loving family, each member eager to showcase their vibrant personalities on screen. The set is a vibrant tapestry of Filipino traditions and modern family life, beautifully symbolizing the fusion of cultures and the journey they've taken together. As the camera pans out, capturing the joy and unity of the Valencia family, the film leaves the audience with a sense of triumph and hope. It's a celebration of identity, diversity, and the power of storytelling to bring people together. The Joe Valencia Show becomes not just a platform for comedy, but a testament to the resilience and strength of a family united by love and a shared cultural heritage.